This is a president who has given speech after speech that gives you insights as to what this president thinks of America. When he went out and campaigned about hope and change, about radical, fundamental reform, he meant it. He meant real, serious transformation of America because he doesn't see America the way those of us in this room do. Winston Churchill once said, the debate is not about the future. The debate is about the past. What do you mean the debate is about the past? If we can't agree on what the past really was, then how are we going to agree on what will work in the future? If you have a fundamentally different view of what made America great, or whether in fact America was great at all, then you're going to have a fundamentally different prescription about what the future of America should hold. Look at President Obama and his speeches. When asked if he believes in American exceptionalism, he answered, I believe in American exceptionalism just like the British and the Greeks believe in British and Greek exceptionalism. As far as the president's concerned, we're all just rooting for the home team. But there's nothing really unique about America in his eyes. No different than any other country feeling good about themselves, whether it was justified or not. And the president, a year ago, a year ago this month, responded to a budget that Paul Ryan put forward, which actually cut the budget, reduced entitlement spending, which has exploded over the past 50 years from less than 10% of the budget to now 60% and growing fast. And when he said, no, we have to put restraints on that spending. We have to get rid of some of these federal programs. The president indignantly got up and made the claim, enlisting all of these programs, these federal programs, and said, America is a better country because of these commitments. I'll go one step further, he read. <laughs> America, he read, America was not a great country until these commitments. So according to the President of the United States, it wasn't until we passed Medicare, unemployment insurance, welfare, food stamps, that's when America became a great country. Why? Because he believes, he believes in an America that is ruled by those in authority, taking money from some giving it to those who know better, who are the planners, who are the smart people, the elites in society, the ones who went to the best schools, the one who comes from the right families. And they're the ones, they're the ones that are the ones who are to, to allocate the resources of this country. this country the greatest country in the history of the world. Someone who understands that the greatness of America is not in its government, not in controlling sectors of our economy or people from the top down. That's what makes us, when we do things like that, it makes us like every other country in the world. 
your ancestors, my grandfather, my father, they didn't come to this country because the government gave them benefits. country in 1925 there were no government benefits except one freedom you got it. we need someone who can carry the freedom agenda in this election and there's no more affront to freedom on every possible level. Then, of course, the issue that got me into this race that convinced my wife to say, yeah, you need to do this. And that, of course, is Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Thatcher said when she was, after she left the Prime Ministership of England, she was never able to accomplish what Reagan accomplished in turning us back from the brink of socialism. She was never able to make that happen in the UK. And she said the reason was the addiction of the British public to the British national health care system. Once people become dependent, every citizen of this country, like every citizen of the UK, will be dependent upon the federal government for your life, for your health, and just as importantly, for the life and health of your loved ones. What tribute won't you pay to the government if they can promise that if you give them more, they can provide you more and take care of you? We need work! There is, following up on that comment, <laughs> there is in fact only one person in this race, only one in this race who has never advocated for a government-run healthcare system, never advocated for the federal government to impose its will on you and forcing you to buy a product against your will. Never micromanaging that one-sixth of the economy. President Obama, as you know well, with Obamacare. Governor Romney, with Romney Care. 